It has dried up so soon. Where does the water in the wet clothes go as they dry up? At the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the process of evaporation and condensation, explain the process of cloud formation, describe the water cycle. Irene is preparing some black tea for her brother and herself. She boils two cups of water for 10 minutes. When she transfers the water into cups, the amount of water is reduced to one cup. Where has the other cup of water gone? On heating, water changes into vapor and becomes a part of air that cannot be usually seen. Now, let us find some other process through which water turns into vapor. Do you know what the process of water turned into vapor is called? On heating, water changes into vapor. This process is called evaporation. Water in the plate kept under the sunlight evaporates fast as water is heated more under the sunshine. During the daytime, all the air surrounding us gets heated. This warm air provides heat for evaporation of water even in the shade. This is the process through which water evaporates from roads, rooftops and other land areas. Similarly, due to sunlight, water evaporates continuously from various sources such as rivers, ponds, lakes, seas, etc. and as a result, Huge amounts of water vapor gets continuously added to air. Water vapor enters air through the processes of evaporation and transpiration. Is it lost forever? No. Let's find out how it comes back. From where do water drops appear on the outer side of the bottle? Is there any leakage? No, there is no leakage in the water bottle. We all know that air contains some amount of water vapor in it. The cold surface of the bottle containing cold water cools the air around it and turns the water vapor again into water droplets. This process is known as condensation. Is this the reason we find few drops on leaves of grass on winter mornings? which cannot be found in a summer morning? Yes, even the vapor inside the polythene bag turned into water in the earlier experiment due to the same reason. This process of condensation plays an important role in bringing back the evaporated water into the Earth's surface. We all know that as we go higher and higher from the surface of the Earth, the atmosphere gets cooler. When the heated air rises up, the water vapor mixed with the air too rises up. When the air moves up, it gets cooler and cooler. At sufficient heights, the air becomes so cool that the water vapor present in it condenses to form tiny drops of water called droplets. These tiny droplets that remain floating in air and come together to form clouds. Many droplets come together to form larger size droplets and at a point of time they become so heavy that they begin to fall down. These falling water drops are known as rain. In special condition they may fall as hail or snow. How does the water get back to its sources? Some of the water that falls on land flows over land surface and reaches the various sources immediately such as ponds, lakes and rivers. Most of the rivers cover long distances on land and ultimately fall into a sea or an ocean. However, water of some rivers even flows into big lakes. 
Have you ever noticed that a part of rainwater disappears on soil? Here, some of this water is brought back to the atmosphere again through the process of evaporation and transpiration, and the rest of the amount seeps into the ground. Most of this water is available to us as groundwater. It can be drawn through the hand pumps and tube wells or bore wells. People in my city say that they need to dig big bore wells very deep to find water. Why is water found here so deep in the ground? In those areas where the land has little or no vegetation, the rainwater flows away quickly. Basically, the areas where most of the land is covered with concrete, rainwater cannot seep inside. This ultimately affects the availability of groundwater. Whoa! It is so interesting to know about water. Yes, it's really wonderful. Water from the ocean and surface of the earth goes into air as a vapor, returns as rain, hail or snow, and finally goes back to the oceans. This circulation of water in this manner is known as the water cycle or hydrological cycle.